Hello everyone, my name is Marie Royce and I'm the Assistant Secretary of State for Educational and Cultural Affairs. Thank you for joining me for a special Facebook Live as we celebrate International Education Week. This Facebook Live also launches my new Facebook page. Welcome to my new community here on Facebook. International exchange is an important component of our national security strategy for the United States. As a national security strategy makes clear, we need to actively promote American higher education to attract the talent that will extend a free and prosperous world. As Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said, at the State Department, we recognize that international education is important for the United States economy and increases Americans' exposure to international issues and to diverse cultures. Joining me today is Mary Evans. Mary is an academic exchange specialist with the Fulbright Program, the U.S. government's flagship international educational exchange program. She manages our Fulbright exchanges with Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Canada and Paraguay. And I'd like to introduce our panel members today who are Fulbright scholars. First is Lauren Hess from South Africa. Lauren is currently pursuing a master's degree in foreign service uh, from Georgetown University. And this is Lauren's first time participating in a U.S. government sponsored exchange program. So I just want to say uh, congratulations and welcome Thank to you, you Lauren. We're very, we're very happy to have you here today. Uh, our next uh, Fulbright scholar is Jonathan Paradine, or is it Paradon, Jonathan? Paradine is fine. Paradine, okay, is from Haiti. He's currently <coughs> pursuing a master's degree in arts management as a Fulbright scholar uh, at American University. And of, of course, this is also uh, Jonathan's first time participating in an international exchange program with the United States. Welcome very much to you. Thank you. And next we have Hakeem, and Hakeem is a youth exchange and study program and a Fulbright foreign uh, student from Afghanistan. Is that right, John? That's correct. Uh, excuse me, Hakeem. Hakeem is pursuing a master's degree in security policy studies at the George Washington University on his Fulbright scholarship. Thank you very much for being part of this. Thank you for inviting us. And, and again, I want to say uh, welcome to you and thanks for joining us in honor of International Education Week. And I've already introduced each of you briefly, but I'd like to start by hearing a little bit more about each of your backgrounds. Hakeem, why don't we start with you and then we uh, work our way down. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Um, first, I would like to thank the State Department and uh, your team and for inviting us here. Great opportunity. Uh, so as you mentioned, my name is Hakeem. I'm from Afghanistan. Uh, I grew up there. Um, I did my undergraduate at the University of Houston. Uh, and now I'm a uh, Fulbright student here at the George Washington University uh, pursuing my Master's of Arts and Security Policy Studies. That's great. Thank you very much. Hakeem. Thank you. How about you, Jonathan? Um, <clears throat> I'm Jonathan Paradin and I'm from Haiti. I uh, grew up there and I did my undergraduate studies in finance in Haiti. Um, and now I'm pursuing a Master's degree um, in Arts Management. That's great. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Um, well, hi. I'm Lauren Hess. I'm in my second year of my master's program at the at Georgetown University, the Master of Science in Foreign Service. I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa, um, and I did my undergraduate in politics, philosophy, economics at Stellenbosch University. That's wonderful. I've been to Stellenbosch. It's beautiful. Oh, yes. No, we're very lucky. That's great. The DC is beautiful too. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, great. Yeah. So, Lauren and Hakeem, you're both studying uh, security policy. So can you tell me a little bit about why you wanted to study it here in the United States? And uh, maybe, Lauren, you could start off for us. Sure. Um, so kind of my journey into international relations and security studies um, was because I couldn't really narrow down my interests. And so I thought, um, I know I like development. I know I like understanding cultures. Um, so how can I do that on a global stage? Um, and for what purpose? So when I decided to come into international affairs, I thought that um, ensuring the countries are secure also depends a lot on how populations are developed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could go into development while still ensuring that the conflicts that kind of 
plague um, sub-Saharan Africa and other parts of the world can be managed a bit better. Um, and as I'm sure most everyone in this room knows, there's no better place for international affairs related studies than Washington DC. Um, Georgetown was kind of a dream school in that sense, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough that it worked out. That's so, wonderful. Thanks yeah. very much, Laura, for sharing that. Hakeem, can you tell us about your story? And also, sure. why did you also study or star you in the area of security? <coughs> right. Um, for me, uh, my personal experience is growing up in Afghanistan. Um, Afghanistan has been experiencing uh, political violence for the last 39 years or so. Uh, so growing up there, there was a personal life experience component to it. Uh, but also my undergraduate studies in political science motivated me and kind of prepared me for this transition to pursue uh, uh, my uh, master's and graduate studies in security. Uh, it's a very complex topic, so I would like to understand it as a concept. Uh, but part of the question was uh, in how, why in the United States? Yeah. Um, you know, given the United States' uh, role in the international, um, on the international political stage, and uh, given its fine and best institutions, um, you know, its higher education is one of the best in the world. Uh, and so being a Fulbright scholar, I, uh, and that's how I ended up here um, right. in the United States. And uh, I encourage other um, students and audiences who can hear and watch us uh, to apply and uh, study. This is the um, the place to, to be at. That's great. Thank you very much. Hakeem. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Jonathan, I want to talk to you a little bit about your master's in arts management. It represents a career shift for you. Can you tell us a little bit about how you uh, found out about the Fulbright program uh, and, and, you know, as far as becoming a scholar and also um, why did it seem like a good fit? Well, um, first I'll start by saying that I consider this more as a um, adjustment than a, a than a shift because I've been doing I've been in the arts uh, since I was very young I started uh, learning violin when I was four and it, pretty much everybody in my family played an instrument mm -hmm. and um, when I decided to uh, go and finance and, and start working in finance I was doing working two jobs at the same time mm -hmm. and I think arts management uh, would be the way to bring these two aspects together um, because I'm mostly interested in, in, in the education aspect of, of the arts. I've been teaching uh, music since I was in college. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I've been hearing about the Fulbright program for quite a while, but I never thought about applying because I, I thought it was very selective and mm -hmm. how could I ever have a chance to to be selected but I think it was in 2016 two of my friends applied and they were selected and I yeah. told myself well, if they can do it I can <laughs> definitely do it too so I decided to apply and it, it worked out very well it was my first time applying and, and the process was long and, and, and was a lot but uh, it paid off. That's wonderful. Okay. Great story. Uh, well, that's, thank you so much, Jonathan. So Lauren and Hakeem, does any of this sound familiar to you? Uh, and, and let me start with you, Hakeem. When you hear this story from Jonathan. Um, I think, um, sure. I mean, to, to, to some degree, the experience can, be, uh, can have common uh, themes to it uh, in the sense that uh, for me as well, be, becoming a Fulbright scholar or student uh, here at the US, in the United States has been a transition mm -hmm. uh, and what I was busy with before be applying to the program, which I was working with the uh, national government back home. Uh, and so it, it, it is a transition. As far as uh, my decision is concerned, I decided to apply. Um, um, so it, in, so, in some way it was a transition, and I think it is a good transition. Great, we're yeah. very happy you applied. Thank you. So uh, Lauren, uh, does this uh, sound familiar to you as well? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I really wanna connect with your application story because yeah. I think for a lot of people, um, it's a very stressful, intimidating process, and so you take yourselves out of the application before you you know, you've even uh, given yourself a chance to be competitive. Um, and definitely knowing people is always the first step um, in making something seem more real and more of a possibility. Um, and I'm glad that we're doing this kind of thing. So hopefully when you're applying, um, you can think of us as being the people that you know that would just mm -hmm. 
uh, people who are passionate about our different fields, okay. um, committed to uh, creating that partnership between our countries and the rest of the world, including the United States. Um, and so if we can do it, um, you know, you can do it too, Remy. Okay. Well, hopefully we've got a few mm -hmm. uh, people listening now, and I just want to ask uh, the three of you, uh, what advice would you give uh, someone who wants to study abroad in the United States? Um, I can start by saying um, don't focus on the barriers uh, that you may face. Don't think about adapting to a new culture, a new language. Don't Because it's, it's all about opportunity and um, you have to have a solid project, something that you believe in, something that you can defend and um, work hard for it. That's, that's great. That's my advice. That's excellent advice. Thank you so much. How about we'll go to you, Lauren, this time? Yeah, I think in terms of in terms of an application, just be as authentic as possible. Mm. Um, because at the end of the day, it becomes clear very quickly when you're writing these pages and pages of essays, or you know, if you get to the interview and you're with a panel of very um, seasoned experts whether or not you're talking about a project that you're passionate about um, and whether you have the drive to carry that forward. So, you know, whether you're here for two years or five years, um, it's a long time to sit with something that isn't what you're passionate about um, or that you believe in. And so really be authentic in the process, be the best possible you, um, and don't try and aim for a criteria that you think is what people are looking for. That's excellent advice. Thanks, yeah. Lauren. How about you, Hakeem? Yeah, so my advice would be twofold. One, pre the uh, coming to the United States and studying mm -hmm. here, and that's the idea of, uh, as my uh, colleague said here, um, try to have a, uh, if not the final idea, but a clear idea of what you want to study. Um, and then once you successfully become a student in the United States, um, Utilize, identify, and utilize all the available resources that this country offers uh, through its fine institutions, uh, and um, become an expert in your field. Uh, and uh, it's a competitive process. It's a it can be a challenging process, but it can be managed. Uh, so uh, apply, and uh, when you come in, uh, make the most out of it. Uh, and I would also recommend when w uh, my advice would be when you come to the United States. Um, United States is more than just uh, a concept, it's more than just a uh, geography. It's, mm -hmm. it's very broad, it's very diverse, uh, so there's a lot more to understand about what United States means. So enrich your experience in that regard as well. Well, yeah. I'm so glad you brought this point up, Hakeem, because that leads me into my next question. Sure. Okay? So, uh, so you've each commented a little bit about your studies, so what, what I'd like to know is um, what have you done to connect more deeply with the communities within the U.S., your local communities that you're part of. And of course, right now you're here in the Washington, D.C. metro area, mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you can explain, or, or you might have done some stuff a little bit in the local community. Yeah. Sure. I'm sure, so I'll start. So uh, Georgetown and our MSFS program has a very active service committee, um, mm -hmm. and so it's been a great way at time to get to know the community but also to find ways of giving back and staying active in the volunteering opportunities that I think you know partially brought me here um, and so we've done a lot of um, work in kind of community food gardens to address problems of food insecurity in local communities um, also have done work with like parks for the people so Wonderful. not only contributing to kind of the greening of communities but keeping them safe through creating socially cohesive spaces in mm -hmm. DC so that's kind of homed at Meridian Hill Park but they have projects all over so oh. that's been a Lauren, great experience. thank you for helping the local community that's yeah. terrific thank you yeah. anyone else like to share <laughs> well <clears throat> I haven't really done any um, volunteering uh, that much, but I would say um, my favorite way to of engaging with, with a community is through culture and the arts, yeah. and mm -hmm. how I can really um, share that with people right now is uh, by inviting everybody that I know to events, you know, um, concerts, uh, by the way, I'll be playing with the uh, <laughs> Symphony Orchestra of um, at American University, uh, and um, the f December first and second. So I nice. always <laughs> manage to invite everybody <laughs> that I know. Yeah, that's right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's always it, it's always great, and and people enjoy it. So that's, that's my way yeah. of 
uh, contributing Wonderful. to... Wonderful. And where did you say this is going to be again, Jonathan? It's going to be at the Kazen Center for the Arts on December 1st. I don't really... I'm not really sure about the, the, the exact time. Yes. Yeah, but I will I will definitely let everybody know. Thank you. I'm Very sure all the details are on the university website. Well, thank you. Yes. <laughs> wow, well, that's fantastic. That's uh, great. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful way to uh, share your talent with the local community. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Yeah. All right, Hakeem. Sure. So uh, this is nothing totally new. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on what country you come from, uh, there might, it might sound familiar to your own home country. However, I would say creativity is a kind of skill that can help you um, explore and be more engaged and connected. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that uh, besides your studies, try to attend events that are organized by once you become a student uh, in a university here in the U.S. Uh, attend events. Um, uh, try to be uh, engaged and participate. Uh, try to take away something from it and be more aware of um, uh, whatever the nature of that event be. Uh, I'm also a member of the Afghan Student Association here at my school, uh, so uh, we um, try, we do our best to be part of the GW community and uh, promote uh, an understanding and awareness of the Afghan, uh, Afghanistan's culture, largely speaking, and also subcultures, uh, the tradition, food, um, and uh, you know many more activities besides I go ahead and you know benefit from the gym facilities so that keeps <laughs> me busy. Oh. and when you go to the gym like I said er like I said earlier you exercise but you also meet a lot of people from other countries so that's sure. how you connect um, so I think professionally as well as personally uh, you there's a lot more uh, that you can uh, be part of uh, to expand your networking and as well as uh, become more connected with uh, the community that you live and study in here in the U.S. Well, that's mm -hmm. great. Well, thanks. Those are great examples of yeah. helping your local communities. I uh, wanted to ask you all, uh, what has uh, most surprised you about living and studying here in the United States? Anything come mm. to mind? I know. It's a tough one. It is. <laughs> And I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to answer your question exactly, but I think um, Hakeem also alluded to it a bit earlier, is that the U.S. is, a, is an incredibly diverse nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And coming from, coming from South Africa um, or any other country, because the U.S. Um, influences and contributes a lot to popular culture, sometimes you feel that you know the U.S. So, yeah. you know, oh, I've, I've heard the accent. Um, someone asked me, do you listen to American music? And I was like, yeah. I mean, music. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of you have the feeling of knowing before you come in and when you get here I think the most surprising is to say that that's just one kind of superficial level of the US mm -hmm. and that there's so much there's so many more communities and yeah. um, when I was in New York over the summer you know you walk from the Egyptian part of town to the Greek part of town to so you, there's a real um, diversity and history here yeah. um, and it's different in every city and so um, it shouldn't be surprising but because sometimes of the superficial analysis that you get from popular culture as you would anywhere else yeah. um, it it's a really actually like enriching experience that that's great yeah that's great thank yeah. you for sharing that um, for me it was also the diversity um, especially in the um, university environment mm -hmm. I was uh, very surprised at seeing how many different people from different backgrounds can be in studying the same program uh, mm -hmm. For instance, in, in my program, you will find people from um, accounting backgrounds or art history or psychology. I, everybody come with their different baggages mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. you know, pursuing the same goal. That's quite of a surprise for me. And uh, adapting to the United States um, has been less than a shock less of a shock than, than what I was expecting mm -hmm. um, because it, it was is my first time being on my own um, yeah. being responsible for every aspect of my life mm -hmm. and um, but I think people adapt very well to the situation and, and, and something that I, I I'm sure you also uh, figured out is that people in the US are very welcoming and helpful yes mm -hmm. so uh, you just have to ask if yeah. there's something you need and eventually you, you'll get an answer
Yeah, thank you very much, Jonathan. By the way, I was going to say it's interesting you also brought up the diversity of skills. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the interesting part about going back to school is that you see um, this uh, big group of uh, individuals that each have a different skill to contribute, but they're also, again, studying the same mm -hmm. major as you, which is very interesting because people think sometimes it's all homogenous. So yeah. that's very fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. Sure. Um, so I will <coughs> mention just a couple points. Um, so while the United States has its own some challenges, uh, like in my country, uh, you know, there's poverty, there's other things, um, and uh, the uh, the things that I'm most surprised by um, from my experiences living and studying here in the U.S. Uh, one is uh, the education aspect. Uh, that's the idea of um, heavy emphasis on a combination of empiricism as well as a compartmentalization of the education system, which is unique because uh, it produces experts in different fields. Um, and by definition, one can be expert in one field only once at a time. <laughs> Um, but uh, the other aspect is uh, the, uh, the social aspect, the society. Uh, no matter uh, how busy people are, uh, the their, the willingness of the people here to listen carefully to hear you is I think very important a lot of times uh, from my experiences in different cultures um, uh, there is uh, there's not enough room for people to take the time and listen and hear you uh, and so I think that's uh, that's a very surprising and the uh, uh, one uh, another element is uh, the hard work the ethics of hard work here in the United States I'm very surprised and people work very hard mm -hmm. um, so those are the elements that I'm surprised the most by. Thank you very much for your contribution. By the way, I also appreciate you all sharing about the individual people that are um, enriching your experience and how um, the people are, are so helpful or are good listeners and, and that's really a wonderful part of your educational background. So when you uh, think about um, kind of your lessons or your skills or your experience, is there one thing that comes out in your mind that you would like to bring back uh, after you finish your graduate degree to bring back home? You know, when you're thinking about what do I want to do uh, once I get back mm. and um, return home? I mean, you I can start know. first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. I can go first. Yeah, go first. Um, yeah, go I think, yeah, from my educational uh, step, from my studies, there's a lot of, um, I'd like to think I've learned uh, quite a bit of um, important models and the concepts and other things uh, in the field of my study, which is security policy studies. Uh, broadly speaking, that I would like to bring that back uh, and with the hope to uh, help uh, Afghanistan um, together um, mitigate uh, the challenges that we have um, and uh, so that be there. Specifically speaking, I would like to um, bring um, leadership, um, resources management, mm -hmm. and um, communication. Uh, those are three main ideas that I would like to have with me because they play an important role in my personal and my professional life, daily life in Afghanistan. So I would like to bring those skills. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't have those. Those ideas are only um, U.S. specific. No, but uh, I have developed uh, uh, these um, skills and in, in these areas that I wish to bring back and contribute and share. That's great. So leadership, human resources, management, and communication. Resource management and communication. That's great. Those yeah. are great things to bring Thank back. You. Thank you so much, Hakeem. Well, um, one thing that I would like to bring back home is this sense of uh, being more organized, working hard, like always working harder. I, I think something that people, especially young people in my country, they lack uh, this culture of excellence. They think mm -hmm. by doing the the bare minimum, they will get where they want to be. But I hope that I can inspire people to push harder and be better at what they do, uh, whatever it may be, uh, because that's when you can really make uh, a difference. That's great. Thanks. So you'd like to bring back the culture of excellence back to Haiti? Yes, That's pretty great. Much. Well, it sounds like your your friends have actually had kind of a culture of excellence since they've already applied for the Fulbright Scholarship. Only right? two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go back and try to get more people? Yeah. Uh, that's and, great. and not only my friends, like, uh, the younger generations. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, in general. Uh, uh, that's a great uh, thing to bring back after you finish your degree. Yeah. Thank you sure. so much. Uh, Lauren, how about you? Yeah. What things do you want to bring back? 
I what think um, jumping off of Jonathan's point about youth engagement, yeah. I think one thing that I've really seen in the US is this um, this drive of young people and trust of institutions in young people to kind of, um, I don't want to say to do things, but so at Georgetown, you know, you have all of these journals that are managed by students, you have undergraduate students working on excellent projects. I mean, I supervise some of them and I think, you know, they know a lot more than I do actually. Mm -hmm. um, or even just looking at the internship experiences of my peers and myself here, um, you're doing real work. I mean, you're, you know, you're doing real work in sure. huge international organizations that are, you know, setting the agenda for countries across the world. And I think knowing that you can achieve in those spaces and communicating that back to young people in South Africa and saying, you know, maybe you don't consciously internalize not that not having that confidence, um, but unless you have these experiences, um, it's very easy to say, oh, but of course Americans can do it, you know, maybe they're, uh, they're automatically better at this kind of thing. Um, and so it's kind of getting institutions back at home and young people to have the confidence to know that they can achieve in these huge global stages. Wow, that's great. Um, and yeah, to put trust that's in great. the young so you're, generation. You're saying, so I'm hearing you correctly, yeah. that you're wanting to get the institutions to help uh, get enlist the support of young people yes. so that yeah. actually so they they'll get the experience and then that and in turn they also develop that confidence exactly. and the institution will get more confidence mm -hmm. of course so that's <laughs> great great thing to bring back well good yeah. thank you so much no, thanks for your you're welcome <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk to you on kind of on a personal subject mm -hmm. about uh, missing home yeah. are there ever times where you miss home and uh, you know, that's something that almost everyone experiences on an international exchange program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so how have you dealt with those feelings or found ways to stay connected with friends, family, and traditions from home? Sure. Akeem, you mentioned, you mentioned the, uh, sure. the student group. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about some of that that you've been doing? Sure. Yeah. Um, yes. The answer is I miss my family, I miss <laughs> uh, my friends, and I miss uh, my people back home. Yeah. Now, um, that doesn't mean I'm going, not going to study here and leave tomorrow and come back. <laughs> um, I think, like I said earlier, um, it's natural for us to miss those people that we care about or the people we grow up with. And I think family is very important in life. Um, how do uh, we um, uh, overcome this kind of uh, experience? Um, uh, just like with many other things, uh, we have to be creative. And so, as part of my uh, experience here in school, uh, I like to stay, I like to go out, there's a lot of things to do. Yeah. Uh, so, and one of the things I mentioned earlier is uh, being part of the campus in the community and the Afghan Student Association. And specifically, like, uh, we do basically, we sit together, we discuss ideas, uh, we look for events on campus in which we can have a little table with our flag and uh, maybe some food and some sweets. Um, the sweet here in the United States, by the way, are a little more sweeter <laughs> than <laughs> my country. I was going to ask uh, how they The pace yeah. here is a little <laughs> yeah. more sweet. Um, so we do those kind of activities, and as a result, uh, we spend an hour and a half or two mm -hmm. talking to people, asking them questions, they ask questions, and by then I realize I don't miss much anymore. So, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. you know what I mean? You, uh, okay. The time goes by, you're engaged, you're... And uh, it depends, of course, for some people, they sit in their room maybe uh, meditating or watching a, a TV show or a movie uh, or go watch a game or something. So there's a lot that uh, the community offers here, uh, unlike in many countries where there's not much more available. I mean, you know, you could go and sit in a public park or read a book, uh, but then, uh, you know, th then there's limited options. Here in the U.S., there's a lot more. So... I hope that is helpful. Thank you, Harkin. That You're is welcome. extremely helpful. Thank you so much. Well, uh, mine's really uh, quite different. I'm not aware of any Asian Student Association mm -hmm. at American University, but I, I've, I've met uh, a couple of Asian students, uh, hearing them uh, speaking Creole in the bus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I think, uh, first of all, um, I, I do miss my family and my friends. Uh, I also miss my dogs back yes. home. <laughs> How many dogs do you have? Uh, we have five now. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, <coughs> but yeah, I think uh, first, thing t thanks to technology, like uh, family is a phone call away or yeah. text message away. Right. So I'm always uh, talking with my mom every day. Um, and then I also reconnected with uh, a couple of friends 
um, from Haiti that live in this area or I have more friends in, in New York City so I try to uh, visit them whenever I can. That's great. Uh, I also mm -hmm. have some, some relatives um, not too far. Um, as far as the culture, what I miss the most is uh, probably the food. Yeah. And uh, I've been cooking very much since I moved here mm. and I try to experiment uh, some you know traditional dishes but there's some others that I dare not try if yeah. too complicated <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing that I miss also is uh, the weather uh, oh, yeah. as you may know Haiti is a tropical uh, island so I tend to miss it more especially when we're getting uh, to the winter right now yes just for all the um, viewers <laughs> Uh, today is the first day of snow. Yeah. yeah. And so snow is coming down today. So yeah, definitely not the same as in Haiti. No. Right? no. <laughs> it's very different. Very different. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for sharing that. You mm -hmm. sound like you've done some great things to try to um, uh, mitigate some of the feelings uh, regarding um, missing your family. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think I connect with everything that my colleagues have mentioned. Um, and so the way that I've tried to um, deal with that is also to create communities um, how, mm -hmm. of support around you. Sure. And I think, you know, for any kind of Korean international affairs, you almost get used to this moving around and being away from your original home um, in many ways. And I think I'm lucky enough that I now have homes in lots of different places, I think including the US. Um, and so my friends and my program have been very important to me. Um, calling home, although I'm sorry, Mom, I know I don't call as much as I should. <laughs> um, and also just, I think, making those little traditions, taking those little traditions where you can. Are you so, raised your mom watching today? She said she would be. She's at a conference. I know she's very busy, <laughs> but she said she'd run That's out fantastic. And, and, I love it. <laughs> and do it. So, Good. yeah, I think my parents send me kind of food and care packages now and then, so That's Taste nice. of Home is here. Um, I've had some past host families who are also South African um, in DC, and so I think that's been a good way to to not feel too lonely. That's great. Well, I'll just say, uh, being <laughs> from the United States, that if um, I'm originally from California, and it's funny because there's even such uh, different differences in different parts mm -hmm. of the country, and right. you're, I'm sure you've already experienced that from traveling. So I miss certain things that I grew up with, and when I go back, I I can't wait when I try these uh, different dishes that I grew up on. So. Uh, it just, uh, yeah. So, but one, you know, you, you also mentioned diversity. There's a lot of different restaurants here, yes. um, so you really can have a lot, a lot of exposure. Right. By the way, I wanted to share something with you that um, a lot of alumni have been telling us, uh, kind of when they come back or we stay in touch with them, that um, maintaining a sense of humor is actually very uh, important. Uh, mm -hmm about being a, a student. So I want to ask you if you think that's true. Do you think having a sense of humor is a very important attribute? And um, do you have you found it to be true? And do you have a, any kind of an antidote that you might want to share? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, well, I don't really have a specific one right now <laughs> to share one. And this doesn't mean I don't have a sense of humor. I do. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's yeah. common. Yeah, it's common uh, when you come across uh, different cultures, uh, you might say or do things uh, that may not be familiar or common to the host culture mm -hmm. and vice versa. And so there will be times when you will make a silly mistake or uh, something like that and that will cause um, you know, parties to the communication to laugh and have a humor. Um, I again, I cannot think of anything <laughs> most recent, um, but yeah, it's possible. It's possible. It's part of life. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, good. Part of the question is maintaining a sense of humor. I think you sounds like you have it. I tried. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. How, what about both of you? Um, well, uh, definitely, I think this is true. Um, I also don't have any particular stories to share right now, but um, what I've been trying to do for a long time now is trying to find a reason to laugh every day. Mm -hmm. I think it, it keeps you, you know, healthy and, and, and want to go on with what you're doing. Um, so yeah, I'm always sharing uh, jokes and, and, and funny videos or pictures with my friends. Um, and whenever I, I get to go out with, with people, I try to you know, make people laugh around me. Mm. I think it's it's in my nature, if I may say. Um, 
so yeah it keeps people happy even like if you're having a bad day you often need this one joke to make you feel better so that's definitely important that's great Jonathan thanks for sharing that Lauren um, I think maybe maintaining a sense of the humor has, has been more to do with, you know, getting through grad school and kind of having this uh, <laughs> narrative of, you know. Um, yeah. So in our first semester, we have a set of core classes and a lot of us, you know, are coming for kind of the development or the security aspect. Yeah. But we have um, an international trade and finance course. And um, for a lot of us, it's just trying to get through it as best as we possibly can um, yeah. so that we can graduate. Um, and so there were many late night study sessions right. in the business school, which, you yes. know, you probably know they have the best couches. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's getting to 2 a.m. and you have to laugh to get through this because um, yeah. otherwise the alternative is to cry. And that's, yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> and that's not gonna happen. So really, you know, kind of keeping humor, getting that class bonding going, um, it's been very helpful throughout the entire process. That's great. Well, thanks for <laughs> keeping a uh, great sense of humor to yeah. all of you. I really appreciate that. And what, what's one thing you'd like to uh, tell people um, back home uh, about the United States? If you're going to share something back with them now that you're here and you've been experiencing it, it whether it's uh, maintaining a good sense of humor. Um, you know, I've, I also think it's interesting when you talk all talking about uh, being on your own. And, mm -hmm. um, the, you know, I think it's also instilling confidence in you as well, mm -hmm. trying to, um, you know, obviously navigate uh, with your community, with the school, with your classes, with your classmates. Uh, so can you tell me, you know, the audience here, um, are, is there one thing you'd really like to say to them about the United States and you'd like them to know? <clears throat> one thing I would say, well, I haven't been uh, around that much, but I, I visited some different uh, cities uh, that had different aspects of the United States. Uh, what I would say to someone that haven't visited yet that there is something for everyone in this okay. country. So whether you like uh, sports, museums, music, ev there is everything you can possibly think of. And um, again, you just have to ask, and people are very welcoming and helpful. And you know you. Also, it's a place to to meet other great people. Great, that's right. Thank you for that. Yeah, Lauren, yeah. you can go yeah, ahead. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna kind of like look down the couch and see. No, you um, okay. Yeah, no, I just want to really echo what you say. As much as there's something for everyone here, there's a place for you here mm. as people coming from all different parts of the world um, and wanting to contribute both to your own countries and also to leave a bit of yourself here in the U.S. And yeah. um, there's a place yeah. for you here. Um, there are lots of people who, um, as you can see in this room, work hard to make these exchanges possible. Um, and so whatever you're good at, um, you can find a way to plug that back in here. And so go for it. That's great. Thank you very much, Lauren. Sure. So I'd like to, of course, in this end, age of interconnectedness, I don't know if mm -hmm. um, you, know, you want me to say a lot of things about what the United <laughs> States is. I'm sure you guys know about what, what the US is about to some degree. but. If I was to speak about one thing, I think that would be uh, the importance of voting. Uh, mm -hmm. Voting is a very important mm -hmm. practice and an idea as well, though it's only one practice in the democratic process. Sure. Uh, but it shapes politics, it shapes public policies, it really shapes how a society or a mm -hmm. polity um, uh, behaves, or mm -hmm. how, how it's, it, where it's moving. Um, so, uh, though Afghanistan has a, uh, my home country, has, does not have a uh, stable tradition of democracy, and therefore we haven't had this um, uh, exper a long experience and a solid experience of democracy, um, I'm very encouraged and I encourage my fellow citizens and um, people uh, to understand the importance of vote. Uh, and um, to many it seems like it's just an idea but its significance is real and it's always there. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing that, uh, and each of you for sharing. By the way, you just, uh, you've been here now uh, for a little while now, right? This is, yeah. and so you just went through an uh, election process, so you were able to see sure. um, in D.C. a little yes. bit of that process. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's exciting. And of course, yeah. we also are in a college environment, so hopefully uh, the students are getting out uh, and voting. And voting. Right. There's yeah. a lot of energy <laughs> around. Oh, it. It was yeah. incredible, actually, to see. So. That's great. By the way, I want to also add, having been a graduate student myself, 
I always remembered that I learned just as much from the other students as I did mm -hmm. my professors. So just yeah. want to let you know, as on behalf of the United States, as Assistant Secretary, the diversity and, and the uh, contributions that you bring in the classroom are incredibly valuable because each one of you are bringing something into the discussion that might not have been part of it before. And so each person is learning from you. So uh, I want to say thank you for that. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. It's a mutual process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask you if there's uh, one word or kind of a phrase that you would use to describe your international exchange experience. I want to say one word, but then I want to qualify it so it doesn't sound. Um, <laughs> I, I would say uncomfortable, but mm. in the best possible way. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, coming to the United States and um, being pushed by our professors and being pushed by our, you know, internship supervisors to really contribute in a way that I hadn't thought I was qualified to contribute mm. or, you know, hadn't had the opportunity to test those skills before. Um, it's made me uncomfortable, but, you know, once you get past that initial kind of phase, um, you really have that confidence and you say, you know, I've consulted on this and this, or, you know, I've learned this and I, and I have this knowledge and I can put it back in um, to wherever I need to, to do so. Um, and it's it's much less uncomfortable. It's actually empowering afterwards. So. That's good. So, yeah. so is the word uncomfortable <laughs> or empowering? I think I wouldn't have been <laughs> empowered without the uncomfortable. Yeah. Part, okay. You know. So, so but okay. the end result is the end know, yeah. yeah, that's wonderful because it's that kind of a it's your put it out of your comfort zone, really. Yeah. Right? You're very doing, much so. And that's that you only get that when you're actually doing something new that you've never done before. Exactly. So that's yeah. wonderful. Um, Jonathan, for me, you. I would say um, that this experience has been um, so far life changing. Life mm. changing. Because okay. I've been doing so many new things that I've never done before. Um, being in a different country all by myself, doing all these things, made me realize that there are so many opportunities out there. Um, I've never worked harder. Uh, mm -hmm or something before and um, you know uh, meeting all these interesting people that changes your perspective on um, what you're gonna do and what you want to be uh, the impact you want to have in life yeah. so definitely that made my mm -hmm. from um, the time I was applying to this program and now I think I have a completely different still very positive view of um, this work and um, I think this is this will stay uh, on forever being the one of the best experiences that I've been um, given to, to experience well oh, thank you so much that's great so uh, life-changing yeah. yeah. great thank you so much Jonathan okay. excellent experiences <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so part of the, I, um, if I may, sure. part of this communication regarding this specific question is in the United States you have to say uh, a lot in a very less time in a concise language. So that's why uh, the question was how would you, w w in one word, what would your experience be? Um, the term or the phrase I would use is multidimensional. Um, and my experience has been um, so far here uh, very uh, different um, in the sense that uh, it has been a uh, challenging at the same time enriching experience. Mm -hmm. So personally I have come to realize many things that I have not thought about before. Um, how I see the world and how I perceive things and how I perceive uh, the environment and people that I interact with. Uh, professionally I would say I think there has been a kind of transition or shift that I feel towards my future. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps I will work in the security realm, perhaps I may uh, I may w end up somewhere else, but I think there is a, a uh, dynamic shift happening, so that's there. Uh, and educationally, I, uh, I every day um, I, I try to learn more, but the other thing is at the end of the day I feel like I'm not learning enough. So mm. maybe that's a... <laughs> so uh, in terms of uh, being in the United States and thinking about uh, in, in the field of my studies, security studies and uh, political science, um, you have to just follow up, catch up with the news and what's happening in the world on a daily basis. I think all that adds up to my experience. So in many ways, in interesting ways and challenging ways, um, uh, I think that uh, it's, it has been a rewarding and enriching and challenging experience. Okay, great. Thank you so Thank much. You.
Well, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we're running out of time, but uh, as I wrap up, I'm just going to throw one uh, fun thing in here. I just want to ask you each, do you each like jazz? Oh, yes. yes. I love jazz. <laughs> I in New Orleans, actually. Oh, it's yeah, incredible. You were. Okay. So I just thought I'd share that because I'm a big jazz fan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I uh, heard that uh, you each like jazz. So I'm so <laughs> excited about that. Uh, so you've been able to experience that here in the United States yes. as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm so okay. happy. Sure. Okay, well, good. So uh, that ends <laughs> on a very positive note. And uh, at this time, I want to say thank you to Lauren, Jonathan, Hakeem, and Mary. Thank you so much for being part of this Facebook uh, live session. Each one of you have really contributed a lot to this discussion and made it so much more helpful for our viewers to uh, understand what it's like to go to school in the United States. And again, we value your contributions as international students. Thank you, thank you so much. And again, thank you to everyone who's watching today. And please st stay in touch with me on my new Facebook page. And I'm just so pleased that you were able to listen to this powerful uh, group of young students and, and also incredible scholars and Fulbright <laughs> scholars. So uh, I want to say thank you. And I was just going to say on behalf of your countries, uh, South Africa, Haiti, and Afghanistan, I'm sure everyone's very proud of you. So thank, thank you very much for being thank part you. of it. Thank you yeah. for thank inviting you. us. And thank you for the opportunity. And thank you, the team. And uh, I encourage um, further uh, cooperation with Afghanistan because this is a great <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, Thank great. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.